Welcome to eight birthday cards in eight minutes or less each. In today's class, I am going to show you a method for taking minimal card making supplies and making eight different birthday cards with each card taking eight minutes or less to make. And this can set you up so that you have birthday cards for the whole year or a system where you can go right to an envelope or bin, pull out a handful of set aside supplies and make a birthday card in eight minutes or less for an event that you're about to have. Um, if you want this to be something that is perfect for any age, um, like any birthday card you might need, you might have to take that kind of into consideration with the supplies that you pick. But I'm going to show you what I am working with today, the supplies that you will need to get this done, including some optional supplies. So there is a coordinating workbook. This is not the full workbook, but it's a PDF that you would download and print, or you can just keep open on your computer or iPad when you're working. And it will show you which all right, we'll show you how to cut your patterned paper, how to cut your cardstock, and then the eight sketches or designs that you will make across this class. This is a purchase that you can make in my Etsy shop. You will not need it to complete the class. It just makes things really convenient. It really breaks things down, gives you the measurements and all of that so that you don't have to watch the video multiple times or um, anything else to kind of keep track of that stuff. But I think you'll be able to finish it even if you don't purchase that. So other supplies. These are also the sketches made smaller so that I could reference them as needed in a in a smaller format. And these um, I did, I printed part of the workbook where it shows the sketch and then a picture of a completed card and I just cut these sketches out. Okay, so for supplies you need one sheet of I recommend double-sided birthday themed or whatever you want to do because you can absolutely make um, cards for another occasion if you like these. I have made a set of Christmas cards with it as well but I'm going to focus on birthday cards because I know that's a popular one and there's people who would like to know how to do this with very minimal supplies even if you know you're more of a beginner card maker. Okay so one birthday themed paper I recommend that it be double-sided. I'm using Doodlebug's party time paper and one sheet of 12 by 12 coordinating colored cardstock to use for the mat. So I've selected a sheet of green paper from Doodlebug. Then you're going to need a paper trimmer. Strictly you could do this with like a ruler and an X-Acto knife or something like that, but if you're even a little bit interested in card making, a paper trimmer is one of those first basic tools that I recommend people purchase and some kind of adhesive. I'm gonna use a Scotch ATG. It's just my per personal preferred and long-term, while it is a investment up front, it, um, you know, the, the tape refills can work out to be quite inexpensive if you purchase them in bulk. I recommend a tape runner. There are other tape runners out there, glue dots, Thermoweb, scrapbook.com. You can purchase other tape runners but this is what I will use. Also, liquid glue will work. Then you're going to need a pack of coordinating ephemera. And that just means like little shapes, characters. These are the party time odds and ends from Doodlebug Designs. And so they include 182 die cut pieces. And this is what we'll be using to add embellishment to our cards. Then uh, I also recommend a scissor, the last mandatory supply you will need is the cards. So I am recommending four pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock that we will cut in half and then score or fold in half again in order to make eight A2 size cards because these are for these sketches and directions are for A2 sized cards. Now you can purchase A2 size cards ahead of time. I'm putting the sketch here just so that my camera will focus on that as it will come in and out of focus on top of plain white cardstock. I will show you how to turn these into cards, but like I said, if you're newer and maybe you're not wanting to invest in a big old pack of paper, you could purchase some cards to start with. And I do have a video that explains how to make the cards as well. 
and I would recommend just making your eight cards right away and storing them so that even if you're working on these one by one throughout the year as you need them, the card stock is, the cards are ready to go, but you can of course cut them each time as well. Then there are a few optional supplies. In order to make your cards, a scoring board and a bone folder are quite helpful. If you're not sure that you're gonna stay into card making, then that's why maybe you purchase pre-made cards or you just fold them in half. You don't need to score them. But it is an option, something if you're gonna get into card making, make a lot of cards, it will be worth it over time. Then the other thing is if you want to have some organizing tools, like I'm gonna use a tray to put my pieces in and that can just be lit like a box lid a shoe box lid or something. You don't have to have anything fancy, but there are some like organizing things out there that might help you keep your things together. You're using some 12 by 12 paper, so like maybe a box that holds 12 by 12 paper or something so you can keep all your supplies together or an envelope or um, there are like two and a half gallon Ziploc bags that do fit 12 by 12 paper in. Okay, the final thing is if you want to add some sentiments to your card. Now with birthday cards in particular, especially when you're using very clear birthday paper, like with the hats or some of these embellishments that are very um, birthday oriented with like cakes and all that and balloons, then you maybe don't feel like you need a sentiment because you're probably gonna write happy birthday on the inside. But if you do want a happy birthday sentiment, what I recommend is getting a stamp set with a small coordinating sentiment. In this case, I have that happy birthday right there. If you're using Christmas, go ahead with the Merry Christmas. Um, and a color of ink. It could be black, especially if that's what you have on hand. I like to use colored ink. It's just kind of adds a fun touch. And then a little bit of extra cardstock to cut strips to stamp the sentiments on, as well as a stamp block to stamp the sentiment. Or you might have a rubber stamp, in which case you don't need the stamp block. Now that we've reviewed all of the supplies that you will need to be successful, we're gonna start by talking about how to make the card bases. Like I said, I would generally recommend to just make all eight card bases at one time, but you can make them as you go as well. I'm going to make sure my hand is there to help my camera. And I'm taking this eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, and I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm putting it at the five and a half inch mark on my paper trimmer, sliding it down to cut it in half. Then, I take my scoring board and I'm going to score it in half again. My scoring board has a handy little um, mark for A2 size cards, but you're scoring it at four and a quarter. So this eight and a half gets cut in, or gets kind of, you know, made in half to four and a quarter. That's where I'm getting that number from. And then scoring along the center. You could instead, if you don't have a scoring board, you're new to card making, just fold it over and cut it in half. Press it down with your finger, give it some good pressure, you maybe take a popsicle stick or something like that too, could kind of help in these situations. And then you have a card. You're gonna make eight of those. And then we're ready to begin with each card. Each time you go to make a card from this class, whether you're doing them all at the same time or one at a time throughout the year, you're gonna to want to get your pattern paper cutting template your cardstock cutting template, and the sketch you're gonna work with. If you chose not to purchase the book, that's totally fine. You just need to rewatch that part of the video, and I plan to have like little clips in them, so like this is card sketch one, card sketch two, etc. So, I'm going to start with the pattern paper cutting template. I see for card sketch one, I'm going to need these pink, these dark pink. It's labeled for sketch one here, and then as you'll notice, each of the card sketches requires a three by three square. So you might find it helpful to just cut all those three by three squares. And then if you notice, each of the extra bits for each card starts as a three by three square and then is cut smaller. So again, it might be helpful to just cut two three by three squares and sort of put them aside for each sketch. That's why it could be helpful to have like envelopes or bags where you put in, especially if you have a small printed version of the sketch, a small printed version as well as the two three by three squares that you will eventually need for it. So the same bags that I hold my stamps in can be quite helpful for that. You could put that those two three by three squares, your sketch, and even your card base in them. So 
So I just kind of want to share some organizing tips along the way. That I realized would be cutting into my eight minutes, but I'm just trying to prep you for the first one and then we'll kind of get started on what I think takes the eight minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna make each one of these one at a time to show you how fast I can do it. Sorry, that was a little loud there. All right, we are going to cut this to three inches. I do often use a guillotine paper trimmer in my other videos. I am choosing not to today because I think in terms of trying to keep all this stuff on my desk, this is a little bit easier to handle and I have a lot of um, measurements that will do well. So I need one three by three square and then I need a second three by three square. I can cut them from two spots on the card or on the pattern paper right next to each other. I don't need to find one here at the top and one here at the bottom. Um, but I wanted to show you that just because I felt like this was a little more organized and readable. I wanted you to kind of see the group of three by threes. Okay, so that was my pattern paper. And then the second three by three square of pattern paper gets cut on the diagonal. So it says a three by three cut on the diagonal. I line up each corner of my square and I drag my paper trimmer down. You want to make sure that your trimmer is pretty sharp for that um, as might dent the paper otherwise. Okay, I keep trying to move my trimmer out of the way. I need that. Okay, so then I go to my cardstock cutting template and I look for the same color. And the only thing I need is one three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch square. So I'm going to cut a whole strip of three and a quarter off of one side. And that's going to be allowing me to eventually get everything I need here in this row. If you cut three and a quarter um, all the way around, it's not a big deal um, because this is also all three and a quarter inch long. So either way, um, I'm trying to make it very, very simple. Okay, so now I have three and a quarter inch strip. I'm going to take three and a quarter inch off the top of it to have a three and a quarter inch square. I'm keeping all of this cardstock and pattern paper together off to the side. If you're only making one card at a time, then you, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that goes back in some kind of bag, envelope, box, something, so that you can hold on to it till the next time you need some cards. I recommended that you use double-sided paper so that you could use one color for the main part of the card, the three by three square, that's gonna be the focal point of the sketches, and the other side or pattern or color for the background pieces. So I took my triangles and I added some adhesive. You could put glue on them. And I'm going to put them in the corners of the card. I think I just did it in the opposite way that I show you on the sketch, so let me reverse that for you. I do show them as being in the top left and bottom right. Um, and if you have directional pattern paper, that might matter. So I'm gonna make sure I do it correctly. We'll place that in the top corner, this in the bottom corner. I am choosing to make my party hats in the background because I want a image to go in the center and the other side of my paper is a pattern that's very tone on tone um, and so anything will stand out well against it and that means I'll put adhesive on the birthday hat side you can of course use the same pattern on both that's no problem it's whatever you like to do there is plenty of opportunity for you to add some creativity to this this is the basic card we still have, even though I've done some quite a bit of extra explaining, plenty of time left to get this adhesive going. Ugh. Okay. So, it might be helpful to keep them in some kind of bag or tray or like a little box with a lid could be great so that each time you're ready to embellish a car, you could just come here and pick out an image. Now what's nice is there are some images in here that aren't explicitly birthday. So if you don't want to have a birthday card with your paper, you can um, have some options in this particular set, but I am going for birthday cards. So here 
I'm gonna pick this elephant. And again, just add adhesive to the back. I'm fine with my cards not having sentiments, but I do wanna talk about the sentiment option. And because I do think while we might go a little over time in this particular one, because again, I offered you a lot of additional explanation, um, we would be able to do this on the next cards in that eight minutes or less. So what we're gonna do is cut half an inch off a scrap of white cardstock. And I have a half inch strip. Then I'm going to stamp my happy birthday sentiment. So I, if I'm using a clear stamp, I peel it off and I mount it onto my block. My block has some little lines to kind of show me that things are straight and put some ink on my stamp and just stamp it on one side or the other because then I can use the other side as well because I just need a small space for my sentiment. So it can be quite helpful to do two in one and then you have that other one for the next time. Okay, so we're going to cut one end straight and the other end on a slight angle with our scissors. Then add a little bit of adhesive to the back. And I'm thinking I may not have, I may have preferred to do it the other way. So that's okay, I have this second one. Cut the angle, cut the straight. Okay, and then I can add the sentiment right there in the corner with my embellishment and my first card is done. And even with all that explanation, I was only 20 seconds or so over. Um, and uh, the other ones, I won't be prefacing everything. And so we'll go even faster and you'll see that they are all accomplishable in eight minutes or less. Ready for card two, back to having our pattern paper, cardstock, and cutting templates and our card sketch. We're going to look at the light pink this time. It's going to tell us to cut two three by three squares. Um, one's gonna stay at a three by three. Now I have this three by six inch piece left from last time. I'm always gonna have something to start with because once we make that first card, we're not starting with a 12 by 12 anymore. Okay, then I have one three by three square. I wanna keep it that way. But it says, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to light green um, for sketch two, which is labeled. So you see sketch two here, and then you know it kind of coordinates with that one. But again, they all just need three by three squares. And so it says to cut them into one and a half by one and a half inch squares. So I take my three by three, I measure to one and a half, trim one and a half again, trim, and one last time. So I have these one and a half inch squares. We are again gonna use the birthday cards, or sorry, the birthday hats for the background. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of adhesive and we know we want the blue side of this larger um, piece of pattern paper. And then I realized, oh, we forgot to cut the cardstock. Oh no. Okay, so I'll just put those to the side for a minute. That is why I like dry adhesive like a tape roller because if that was glue, that would be drying right now. We only need a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch square of cardstock for the mats for this card. So I had that three and a quarter inch strip um, and then I will cut three and a quarter inches off of it to get that square, okay? We'll put the blue piece on top. Then we'll get our card base. And if you look at the card sketch, it shows you taking those one and a half inch squares and putting them in each of the corners. And we're just kind of eyeballing it to see that it's about even from the corners. You could take some measurements if you want. That certainly does take up more time though. And then a little bit of adhesive on the back of here. If you are curious about the advanced tape glider from Scotch, I do have a video about like tips and tricks to use it, how to load it, all that kind of stuff, because I think it's a really great tool and I know a lot of people who love it, but there are some people who get kind of frustrated with it. And so um, they've said that video has been helpful. Okay, so 
now we have our basic card design and we just need to add an embellishment and we're three minutes in <laughs> so we have plenty of time um i could i mean these embellishments make it so easy i could overthink it i could look at a bunch and i could be like oh this card is actually for a little boy and so maybe i want to pick a different embellishment or something like that but um you don't have to and so now i want to i've picked out that little kiddo and I want to make a sentiment because I want to show you that's totally doable in the amount of time we have. Now you also might be like you know I actually really have a lot of stamps and I'd like to color some images for these cards. By all means please do that. It's going to take longer than eight minutes but that's totally okay. This is not a race. I just want to show some people like what's possible because I think some people think it takes a lot of supplies, a lot of time to do card making, and I want to show you that there's a way that you don't have to do that. But go ahead, go for it, stamp a bunch of images, take your time, color them how you like, and then instead of having this little tray of embellishments here, you could just have a tray of your stamped images that you made yourself and use that when you're ready. Okay, I'm again just going to stamp two because I have the time and in case I mess up but I basically just want to be here on the side and eventually if you weren't doing this for a class you would just use all those extras that had been made throughout the process on a card that worked for them and then we'll add some adhesive to our little ephemera there and there we go card number two done in less than five minutes Card number three. I also, I realize I still have my stamp like on the block and that would take a little bit of time, all that. But um, as you can see, we'll be well under for most of these. Card sketch number three. It's again going to require that three by three square as well as for sketch three, a three by one and a half inch rectangle. So we'll come back to our pattern paper and cut off another three inch strip. And then cut two three by three squares. Oops, sorry, I'm out of camera with that on the bottom there. Okay. And another three inch. And this time it says to cut it at one and a half inches. I am using a non directional patterned paper, like there's no clear top or bottom of either side, but. I do want to emphasize you absolutely can use a directional pattern paper. I did design this so that it would work with directional pattern paper because there's a lot of directional pattern paper out there and I really, really want you to be able to use your stash. Again, the only cardstock mat we need for this one is a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch rectangle. You can see that by going to the cardstock cutting template and it says you need one of those three and a quarter by three and a quarter for each card and also the color again matches. So I'm just matching it across there. Okay, we get our card base. I think also even if you were making your card base each time, it was as you could see at the beginning of the video a relatively fast process. The smaller pieces I'm going to put adhesive on the blue side because I'm going to use the party hat side. Then I'm going to put my three by three square adhesive on the party hat side. Okay. I also a lot of times on my channel will share how I create cards with a piece of pattern paper and leave no scraps just like I'm doing today. As you see, when you're done, there's going to be no pattern paper scraps. There's going to be nothing left for your pattern paper. There are going to be bits of cardstock and we can talk a little bit about that, but I will often make the same card. So I'll show you, oh, we've got to stay focused a little bit here. I'm going to put my rectangle on the top and bottom as according to the sketch. And I'm using this mat that I have behind me with the little lines to kind of help me center it. But honestly, for years and years, I always just eyeballed it. I didn't have a fancy mat or a fancy place to work. I was just working on a desk or something like that. So, um, but anyway, usually like I'll show you, here's how you use a 12 by 12 piece of paper, but I'll make the same design. And so you'll make, you know, six cards that are exactly the same. And for this class, I wanted to show you that you can absolutely make different cards. And I thought that would be helpful for people who are kind of just getting into it and are a little overwhelmed at the idea of, well, what would I do if I had, you know, 
eight of the same card. I want all my birthday cards to be a little bit different so the next time I come to an event, I'm not giving out the same card essentially. And you know, of course you could change up embellishments and things like that, but I get it. So that's kind of my motivation there. All right, so we have a um, basic card done. We're ready to go into our embellishments. Of course you could have to dump them, you might have to dump them out each time, but I really do recommend like there's cases out there. I should um, stop and get one in between the next two cards so I can show you that. Ooh, this might be a cute time to use this monkey because it's a long vertical design and he's a little bit bigger than my three by three square. You also might want to, um, oh, totally just let us a train of thought there because I am recording this live in part to show you exactly how easy it is to do um, in real time. Okay, so I cut a half inch strip just like I've done in the past. I'm ready to stamp my sentiment. Let's just do one this time because I'm gonna show it to you each time. I'm gonna have too many extras at the end. Okay, cut on an angle there. I'll show you a different option next time in case you want something a little bit more interesting there. You could also, you know, use a bunch of, you could die cut sentiments. There's so many options out there, but I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible for today's class. Okay, so kind of overlaps him. Maybe I want to, um, put my sentiment, butt it up against the edge here, and then layer the monkey on top, kind of shift him around, have him hang off a little bit so he's not interacting with the sentiment. You can kind of make some different decisions. I could maybe put it at the top of the monkey, where there's a top of the panel, where there's maybe more room by the monkey's head. You can kind of fiddle around with all of these things because obviously you're probably, not, well, you're probably not gonna be using the same exact supplies as me, but I just wanna show you some different design things that I might think of. Um, as to how I would solve a problem like that where like maybe two things were kind of clashing with each other. So we briefly spoke about additional cardstock. You are gonna create some cardstock scraps. So here is one of my cardstock scraps. It comes from, I cut three of these um, cardstock squares and then this is this chunk that would come right down here. And Something I can do with this is use it to help to like pop up my image so it's not laying totally flat against the paper. This is something that I show on my channel pretty regularly because it's one of those tips that I hear is helpful from people like often. Like the first time they saw it, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna always do that. Um, so instead of buying foam tape, this is a great way to use up some of those scraps. So they do make a product, if you're, especially if you're newer to card making, like it's called like foam tape or foam squares. I do own some technically, and you could use this and put it behind your critter to give him some dimension. I'm trying to show you like, you know, pretty minimal supplies, so I don't have that today. All right, so then I can take that and place it behind my critter and then add adhesive to this cardstock instead of like kind of limit the adhesive to where I've put the cardstock down and not on the extra on the outside. And then that will just have him so that he kind of just gives a little bit of extra dimension and depth to the card. It's very, very subtle trying to kind of give you an idea. So it's not gonna affect its ability to be put in the mail or anything like that, but just has it sort of um, floating off the card, giving a little look of a shadow behind it. And we were still able to accomplish that in less than eight minutes. We're on to card sketch four. We're coming back to our pattern paper cutting template. We're seeing card sketch four is this darker blue a three by three and then a one and a half by three. Do you notice it's basically the same here? I did show you cutting it this way because if you do have directional pattern paper, that's gonna be important because you're gonna be using it in that direction on your final card. If you have non-directional pattern paper like I do, then you don't really have to worry about it. So well, let's go back into view. Cut that three by six inch piece that we had left over from last time into a three by three square and then take that second three by three square that we have and cut it in half so that it's one and a half inches by three inches. And then cardstock cutting template, looking again for that darker blue, seeing that all we need 
is a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. So because we used up that scrap from last time, this is all we have left. Um, and that's fine, that's according to the template. We've only used this portion of it, we have all of this left. So now we are ready to cut off another three and a quarter inch strip. So it's three and a quarter by 12. Cut a three and a quarter inch square off of it. Okay, we got all our pieces. Then we're going to add adhesive to the blue side of these and the party hat side of the square, just like we have throughout the process. Again, you can see why this would be really helpful to sort of batch it. Like you could be cutting all those three inch squares and those three and a quarter inch squares all at the same time and not having to sort of stop and start as much as I am. And you can actually add adhesive to the cardstock at the same time too. Again, that nice advantage of doing the tape runner that doesn't dry um, the way that a, a glue would dry. We have our sketch. We're going to line them up so that they're the same across the card. So I'm putting one rectangle on the edge of a landscape card. Oh, that's sticking to me over there. And then I use, I'm using the lines here on my grid mat again because I have them, but you could eyeball it or you could take a ruler and we're actually just a straight edge of any kind just so that you would sort of know things were straighter and then like line them up against each other. You can measure it, et cetera. There's you know, plenty of options for that. Okay, then our square goes sort of, it goes in the center and then just down a little bit. There's no exact measurements for how far down it is. And you want it to overlap the party hat paper about the same amount on each side. Then your square in the center. Now, I wanted to talk about a different solution for those embellishments that might make it easier if you're gonna assemble these cards one by one over time, like every couple weeks or something like that. Instead of placing them like in a tray or a bag, you can find a little box like this. Um, there's, this is one happens to be from a company called Iris. I think they're available at like big box stores pretty regularly. Um, and you could put all of your embellishments in this instead, and then it would have a similar effect of the tray in terms of being able to kind of like rifle through it, but then you could close it up and put it away with your supplies and not have to like dump it back out each time. So I wanted to show you that because I do think that's probably a better option than the tray for a lot of people who will be doing this uh, class. Okay, so now I need to find an embellishment. I'm just kind of Rifling through, who looks cute. He's a little too big. He's gonna be great on a portrait size card though. Um, and something I might recommend too, is especially if you have extra time, is instead of only adding like one embellishment like this, that you could then, you know, come in with some extra things like having, I mean, the bird sitting on your cupcake would be pretty unsanitary, <laughs> but um, coming in with like a few more of the smaller things like popping on some of the stars. And obviously, of course, you could be using a different pattern paper, this wouldn't matter, but a lot of embellishment packs do come with some of these smaller pieces. So I do wanna highlight that that is something I would generally try to kind of take into account is that I would try to use some of those smaller pieces as well so that when I'm done, I'm not stuck with so many um, of the embellishments left over. So here, like this little puppy, since I have a little extra time to kind of talk about some designs, design decisions, since I have this puppy, he's blue on blue. And so while there's this nice white border around him, I do think this kind of stands out a bit more. So I think I'm gonna skip a sentiment because I want everything to stay nice and balanced and even on here. Um, and so I'm going to put a little adhesive on the back and call that card finished. We are ready for card sketch number five. When we return to our patterned paper, we're going to need to cut another three by 12 inch strip off of it. So we'll bring it to that three inch mark, slide it along two, three by three squares to start us off. There's one, 
and then there's the other, and then we'll go look at what we're gonna do with that three by three inch square for our um, elements in the background. I see card sketch five is this orange one, and it's the same as number two. It is these one and a half by one and a half inch squares, but they're gonna be used a little differently on the card. So even though we're gonna sometimes cut things the same, we're gonna assemble the pieces differently. So we're gonna bring it to one and a half, trim it, one and a half again, and then one final time. I'm trying to be very clear and say my measurements a lot. I know sometimes those numbers feel kind of overwhelming to some people, but I think that that means that people will be able to recreate it without purchasing the workbook, and that is kind of my goal. I, I want you to be able to do that if that's what you want to do. I don't want anyone to feel like they have to make a purchase to be successful. Of course, I appreciate those of you who do support my channel. There is a link to the workbook in the video description as well as a little coupon code for you that can be used on the workbook and any other items from my Etsy shop. So if you really like this, you might notice I have two other class workbooks available. Those are free classes here on YouTube as well. Oh, I forgot to go cut my cardstock again. I get so excited to start assembling. Okay. We look at the cardstock template. We know we're working with the orange and all we need is a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch square. So we'll chop that up real quick. Okay. Um, so there are two free other classes here on YouTube. They do come with workbooks, so you could purchase those and use the same coupon code on them. Okay, so we're going to put our blue square on top of our green cardstock square. We're going to get our card, and this is also going to require some centering. So again, grid mat is helpful, not necessary. Uh, you can use a ruler to help you kind of line things up. And so um, essentially what we're gonna try to do is make it look like there's a strip of paper going down the middle and across the middle here. So like kind of like a present, when you wrap a present, you put a little bow on it and then this is like the bow. But we're going to do that with these little squares instead so that we're getting this no scrap look. And put this at the top. Again, as long as you're pretty close, like you could take a straight edge again and use that. But if they're like a little bit off, the fact that the square stretching across it is actually gonna hide that a little bit. And kind of centering it over here as well. I should probably be using these to kind of help me center it as well because there's um a space there in the center I can kind of be using to help me eyeball things. And you don't need to make sure that they matched across the center. So like, really, these two pieces were next to each other. See how that kind of completes the pattern? I don't really have to worry about making sure that they line up across here because the illusion that we're creating is that this isn't one continue, or that this is one continuous piece, in which case these, you know, wouldn't line up. There would be a bunch of stuff in between. So it really doesn't matter how you do it. Um, and again, this would work with directional pattern paper, but in that case, you would have to be paying more attention to which direction everything is facing as you lay those pieces down so that everything is facing the top of the card. We are again working on a landscape card for this one. Each of the sketches will show you that. They give you the measurements on here, the measurement for the A2 cards, the measurement for each piece, the you know um, mat that you're gonna need, all that is on there so that you don't need to be re-watching this video. We'll center that, pick our embellishment. I know for some of you who are more experienced card makers, this might be getting kind of repetitive. You might be like, okay, I think I'm done. I'm probably just gonna go download this so I have to, I don't have to keep listening to you in which case great I totally get it because I am um, but I hope it's really helpful to those of you who are like yes I needed it broken down this clearly for me so I'm kind of just now being more picky because I'm like oh I'm not even going over time okay I think that pinata is adorable I did want to come up with a reason to use him 
So then, oh, we probably need a birthday sentiment. And I told you that I would do something a little bit different this time. So maybe I do need to speed it up a bit. Okay, we're gonna get that half inch strip. We're gonna stamp it with our blue ink. And then, again, use whatever color coordinates. And I want to cut one edge straight. And this time, instead of just that angled edge, I'm gonna do a more of a banner look. So I might need to trim a little extra off this. And when I do a banner, I'm going to snip down the center and then snip from each of the corners in to cut a little triangle out. I think I actually got like closer than I would have liked to to the birthday sentiment there. So you can adjust it as you want, but just so that you could get like a little bit different of a look and you can choose which one you like better or just do them differently. That's another thing you can do with that sentiment. Again, you can come in with some of that extra cardstock. Like I had that little scrap from last time and I can use that to add a bit of dimension to my pinata here. You could, you know, you could certainly take some extra time and do things like adding strings so it looks like your pinata's hanging. There's all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with card making. But I bet you when you bring these cards and you say that you made them by yourself, especially if you're a newer card maker, people are still gonna be really impressed by these. Even these simple cards. We are on to card sketch six. Moving back to a portrait card this time. We're gonna start with, we are sketch six, which is this light blue color. So we are gonna need a three by three square and a three by three square cut into three by one inch strips. Remember again, if you're using directional pattern paper to cut it like it's shown, so that as you lay your strips across, the top stays on the top. Okay. I do still have a three by six inch piece left from last time. So that's what we're gonna start with. Cut off a three by three square, and then we're gonna cut this one to one inch, one inch again. Okay, come back to our cardstock, looking for that light blue, seeing that there's just the one three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Cards seven and eight are where we're gonna come in with these extra pieces, so they're, they're, it's gonna happen. But I know some of you are like, yeah, wow, it just seems like you do the same thing every time. Why do I even need that um, template? But it's because there's a little bit extra at the end. So three and a quarter by three and a quarter. I've also had a lot of people ask me to make a template to show them how to cut the cardstock in an efficient way. And so I wanted to show you that you really only need one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. Because also there's a lot of cardstock, um, 12 by 12 pattern papers that come with solid paper to go with it. And so seeing how you could cut it out of that, I figured could be helpful for some people. Okay, so let's get our adhesive going on the back of all of these pieces and start assembling. This is gonna be another case of a little bit of like, I'm not telling you, hey, there needs to be half an inch in between each of these but I'll talk with you a little bit about my thought process. Okay, so I want one of the strips to be on the left side towards the top. Then I need my next strip to be on the right side and only just a little bit spaced out from the first strip. Okay, then the final strip, we're gonna rotate it back to the left side. And this time it's just gonna be a little bit from the bottom. So there's gonna be a pretty big gap here. And I recommend, rather than trying to think about how much space you want here, just trying to make this piece about the amount from the top, about the amount from the bottom as this is from the top. It's not a necessity, but that's just kind of like the heuristic I'm using to help me. And then I'll place my square of cardstock on top of that, and then my pattern paper Again, my basic card. Come to my embellishments. We do have a vertical card. So we talked about how there was like a little boy with a balloon that we needed a vertical card for. So maybe it's his time to shine. Although he does have a lot of blue on him and there's a lot of blue on this card. So 
Oh, here's another one that really could use a vertical card. Let's maybe use this cute little elephant because he's also pretty tall. And then we can take one of our little half inch strips. I now have scraps of half inch strips. I could of course keep cutting them. You've seen that I can do that in the, you know, eight minutes or less, but I don't like to be very wasteful of material. So I would probably be going in and stamping on my scraps and I'd be holding on to my scraps in between cards. At the end of making all of the cards, I will give a few more like tips about keeping this organized if you wanna use this class throughout the year, okay? Cut it on an angle, cut the other side straight. The angle is kind of depending on what side my embellishment is on and what space I have left. So here, when I place this elephant down, I could of course place him like on this side, but then he's gonna hang over the card in order, I could try to center him. Um, and that's fine if you like him a little more centered, then you're not gonna have quite as much room for your sentiment. And if you don't want a sentiment, again, totally fine, go for it. Um, but he is almost the same width as my, rec or as my square here. And so to make him look a little bit more interesting, and in general, this is a good tip. If you want your cards to look a little more dynamic, try to break outside of boxes. So this, I mean, this is literal, the square, very obviously a box. So if he kind of like his little butt and little tail is hanging outside, it just makes things look like there's a little bit more motion, kind of like he's floating into the card or something like that because he's not contained by the space. So that's how I'm making some of those decisions and how I know like, well, why would I put it there as opposed to, you know, half an inch over or something like that? And we'll add some adhesive to the back of all of this. Put that in the corner. And then again, having him hang off and break that box of the card a little bit. I also, if I'm working with like critters or people, I kind of try to make it so that the animal's eyes or face is sort of facing in the same direction as the sentiment, because it kind of like looks like he's looking at it. And therefore it kind of creates an interaction between those two things, as opposed to if I put the sentiment behind the animal or critter or person or whatever. All right, we're here on sketch seven and we're gonna get just like a tiny bit trickier because we are gonna add some mats behind some of these additional pieces of paper. So um, we'll walk you through that nice and slow to make it clear, but I do wanna call out this is that time where we're gonna come in there with the extra mass, just kinda ease you into it. Again, really beginner friendly sort of class. So we need two three inch squares. This time we're looking at the yellow because that's marked for sketch seven. And then we're gonna be looking at that over here on the cardstock piece as well. Okay, so we have our last three by 12 inch strip. However, I do have to cut it because there's a branding strip on the bottom. You could have cut that off earlier in the process and you wouldn't be worrying about it now. You'd just be working on that last piece. Okay, so three inch square three inch square and then where this is for our last card perfectly use up that pattern paper will feel super efficient um we're going to make one and a half inch strips again so if you have directional again make sure that you are accounting for the direction that i'm showing it i'm showing cutting it um, across when you have the top facing up and then cutting it across this way Now, card stuck. We are looking at needing a three and a half, sorry, three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch rectangle. And then I know I'm gonna need one for the next card. So I need to save some of this because this isn't gonna cut me a three and a quarter. What I would probably recommend is just so that you don't make any mistakes, if you're kind of doing it in this like very chronological way, is to cut your other three and a quarter now. Because I could maybe squeeze some of the extra pieces I need out of this, but once, if I make a mistake on this piece that's left that is the full rec or square that I need, I'm going to have a problem. I'm gonna to need to get another piece of cardstock. Not a big problem, but 
So I'm gonna cut my other three and a quarter that I need for card number eight and just put that to the side. Then I'm going to follow the directions for what I need for sketch number seven. One of them should actually be coming from this piece and the other should be coming from one of my scraps if you look at the way this is particularly laid out. It doesn't really matter other than you need to make sure that you have like enough of everything. So I'm gonna do it the way that the sketch says. I'm gonna cut one of my three and a quarter by one and three quarter inch pieces from a scrap of my strips. So let's go to one and three quarters. Okay, and there's that just tiny little bit and you can kind of see represented there. And then this longer piece, I'm gonna cut another one and three quarter out of it. And if you look here, you'll see for sketch number eight, the purple, I'm gonna need to use this piece again. So we're holding on to that. And we already have the three and a quarter. So these are what we need for the future. We're not having very much cardstock left, but we do have this big strip. And I know at this point I can go ahead and use it for popping things up if I want, um, that this is gonna be extra. However, you might prefer not to start chopping up any of your scraps until you're really, really sure that you have everything you need. And I totally understand that. Okay, go ahead and put some adhesive on the, the blue side of those and the party hat side of these. Stick them to their cardstock mats. My cardstock mats are a quarter inch bigger. That's how I decided you know, what sizes I needed for everything, is I just make them a quarter inch bigger on each side, which gives a little eighth of an inch border around them. And I just try to keep that really consistent across as many of my templates as possible, just so that when people use my templates, they get kind of familiar with my method, that my method is a quarter inch bigger cardstock mats, and my method is, you know, using a piece of cardstock with, or using a piece of pattern paper with no scraps and all that. They kind of like know what to expect from me. All right, coming to this card base, looking at our sketch. We're gonna put one in the top left-hand corner. If you have directional pattern paper, make sure that it's facing correctly. And one in the bottom-hand corner. Now. This is a case where I think, and then the square goes in the center. You could actually turn this card on its side and it looks great too. So that is something to consider as you kind of like, if you work with this over time, you make them your own, that kind of thing, or for some reason you really needed it to be this direction for an embellishment you wanted to pick. I think it works well either way. I like it a little bit better in the landscape version. This little kiddo is pretty cute. Maybe I can find some, there's some extra like, music notes that you can kind of have coming out. Again, you're probably not using this particular set, so it doesn't really matter, but this is, you know, in these instances is a good time to like look for things. And then I wanna share a little tip with you about that. So um, my tip would be if, again, we wanna have them kind of coming outside the box a little bit, right, breaking the box then these can also break the box. But what I would probably do here is think about the rule of odds, which tells me that generally things look better if there's an odd number total, which is why I have like three pieces of pattern paper here. And you'll notice across the cards, there's a lot of times there is essentially like three pieces or five pieces. It's not a strict rule, but it's something to consider. Like for instance, there were three strips in the background here. There are, I mean, there's four pieces overall, so that's a little bit outside of it. Um, and sometimes symmetry looks great, right? When things are like really well balanced or that kind of thing. But anyway, rule of thirds can be helpful. So what I wanna do is look for three music notes. I kinda wanna pick ones that aren't blue and everyone I'm pulling is blue. And so I'm gonna have to be like, oh my God, I wanna go over time. I have one minute left, oh no. Okay, so I think you could still see that I could get this done if I needed to, but I could pick out three notes and then kind of even place them in like a visual triangle. It's pretty easy to do, but I just mean that like, if you went from one to the next, it would be in a triangle. Here is the downside of using a tape runner, is now when I want to 
put these down. A tape runner is kind of uh, awkward for teeny tiny pieces like this. You can absolutely do it, but this is where having a bottle of glue as well as your tape runner can be kind of helpful. I do like to keep both glue and tape runner on hand in my craft room. I like the Barely Art glue, um, but there are a number of high quality glues out there and Elmer's glue will do the trick, but it's a little more likely to make your paper kind of crinkly. So this looks like a pretty easy place for a sentiment. I know I'm technically over my eight minutes, but I think we also kind of saw I did certainly a fair amount of explaining and I do have extra sentiments. So I could place that there or you could leave it off and it would still be a great card. All right guys, we're in the home stretch. It's the last card. So we are going to have sketch number eight. You can of course also do these in a different order. You don't have to do them in the right order. So like say, you know, you were making one every time the occasion comes up and you're like, actually, I think that Jack would like sketch number six, but I'm only on sketch number two. Go jump ahead. You know, no problem if you think that would like better suit your recipient who I randomly named Jack. Um, or if you're like, actually, I really like sketch one, something worth noting is that you can, because they all use the same amount of the patterned paper, um, and most of them use the same amount of the cardstock, although sketch seven and eight are exceptions, there is a little extra cardstock, so you could make an extra seven or eight probably. Um, actually, you could definitely make an extra of seven or eight. I can't say how many extra, I'd have to kind of do the math on that. Um, or you get another piece of cardstock and you can do more. But you could say, you know what, I'm actually just gonna make eight of sketch one and it's still gonna use up a 12 by 12 pattern paper perfectly with no scraps. And then you can make eight of sketch two, etc. Or you can make, you know, you can do this across a couple of different collections. So like I'm making cards that are pretty well suited to kids today. So like maybe you wanna make one set for kids and then do another set for adults or something like that so that you have cards for whoever you need them for. All right, focus, cause this is a longer card. We're looking at the purple. We need a three by three inch square and then our other three by three inch square is going to get cut to a half inch strip and a two and a half inch strip. Oh, move the line a little bit. Okay, so those are all the pattern paper pieces that we need. And then we said that we, just to be careful and clear, we did already cut our three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch um, square for the mat. The cardstock cutting template then tells us to take this extra piece here that is three and a quarter tall, but we're needing to cut the width. So one is to two and three quarters, and the other one is to three quarters of an inch, which I'm regretting not cutting off first because that is a tiny little strip that I'm cutting off there. We're gonna hope for the best. Okay, that's one of the things I do like about this trimmer. That would have been really tough on my guillotine trimmer. So I do think that this Tim Holtz tonic trimmer can be really nice for small cuts like that. I did a whole video where like I look at like great things to know about the swing line guillotine trimmer, great things to know about this Tim Holtz tonic trimmer and like why I would have both in my collection. So those are, those videos are out there for anyone who's curious, especially those of you who may be a little more experienced. Okay, we're going to use the pattern sides for the smaller pieces. I'm gonna put them on their cardstock mats. I mean, they're both pattern sides, but I'm thinking of the blue as the more solid side. So we're gonna put the party hat side down. Again, you can just kind of choose this for your own self because you're probably gonna pick different pattern paper. This can be done with, like I said, pretty much any 12 by 12 paper. Even if it's single sided, you can absolutely do this. You could do it with two pieces of paper so you could mix up the patterns. That's a little bit more advanced, but you could, or a lot of these sketches will look fine if it's the same pattern throughout them. I just kind of like the variation of a double sided. I made sure it worked with directional so that won't be a limitation. We can really bust through some pattern paper. Now, of course it does make eight cards with one sheet of 12 by 12. So you're getting a lot, you know, and if you're like, well, you know, eight cards is a lot. I don't, I only maybe celebrate eight birthdays a year. Certainly some of us only give, you know, for eight occasions. I do have a list 
on my website of places that you can donate handmade cards. So if you are wanting to make extra, or if you like, maybe, you know, you're working with this collection, similar to this, making kids cards, you're like, I actually only need five kids cards this year. Um, you can take the other three and donate them, you know, or add them to a collection of other cards that you've made to donate them. There's a specific organization that I think it's called the Confetti Foundation that does accept birthday cards, but also there's just a whole number of them on the website. So check that out at JessCrafts.com. All right. Um, so as according to the sketch, I'm going to start by placing this piece uh, towards the top, but it's a little bit further from the top than it is from the side. So I'm trying to mimic that with my placement. And then this other little strip is a little bit more over from the side. It's kind of like it's basically centered. And the biggest thing is that I want it such that a little bit of it's going to be hanging out from underneath this square. So you can try to move it down as far down the card as you want. It's all a little bit just kind of like eyeballing placement sort of stuff. Um, the nice thing about my dry adhesive again is that um, it's a little bit easier to like lift up. So for instance, when if I were using glue, it would certainly leave a little bit of residue behind even if I gently placed it down. But at the same time, glue would give you a little bit of like up and down wiggle room. So both of them work pretty good for that kind of thing. I did want to highlight another thing that you could technically do with scraps of cardstock, especially as we're here at the end and we really only have scraps left. We have these little bits left. We did use some scraps already earlier for one of my other tips, but something you could do is take a little bit of your cardstock and use it when you have a large gap. So I want this to stretch across these two pieces of paper and to make it like feel a little more smooth so it's not kind of dipping in, I could put a piece of cardstock behind it. The cardstock that I'm working with is textured cardstock from Doodlebug Designs. It's not particularly thick, and so it's okay if I don't put any cardstock behind it to support it. Then our card is basically finished. We have this cute little dude celebrating with some ice cream, and we could place him here on the card. In this instance, I would again have him kind of coming out of the box a little bit. He doesn't have to come out of the green box, but you can. Um, even just coming out of the blue box can help quite a bit. We get a half inch strip of cardstock, which I've shown you how we can cut that a couple times now. And stamp our simple sentiment down. Maybe you want to go back to that banner look this time. We do have a little extra room so we can cut down the center, cut from the sides to make little tiny triangles coming out of it, and then a straight cut there. I will say this one is easier to mess up. I think if you're a beginner or you're a little bit of someone who likes things done precisely, then you might prefer to do the just sort of slanty look because I definitely I'm a little more imperfect with cutting banners. It's in fact driving me a little bit nuts. This one isn't like a perfect point at the top here. Also, you do need a better quality scissor to get like really into that point. So if you're working with some very basic scissors, I do think that just slant cut is the better way to go. So we've officially made all eight cards. I want to share a couple of quick organization tips with you to help you stay organized if you want to do this project over the course of the year or longer until you know you use up all the cards, etc. So let's take a look at that briefly. I already mentioned that instead of putting them in like a tray or something like that to leave out on my desk, if I was going to do this over the course of time, I put them in like a little latch box. This also could be just like a small box with a lid that you got as like a gift box or something like that. It doesn't have to be something fancy. Um, but in terms of storing the paper, so here I have patterned paper for a different set of cards. So if I were to make, maybe this would be great for cards for adults, for instance. I have the American Crafts uh, Life of the Party Celebration paper, and I have some coordinating embellishments for it. Sorry about that. Um, and so I could include those with my kit, and maybe I wanna have two choices. So like maybe if I'm making adult cards, I'll grab this collection, but then maybe I want some cards for kids or some like, in this case, this is a little bit more like pink and purpley kind of colors. Um, this is Make-A-Wish Birthday Girl from Echo Park Paper. 
And as you can see, it has a sort of more plainish side. It's kind of a little bit of a, a stretch here because it's a very, um, but it's a simple pattern, like this plaid. So I'd probably use that in the place of the blue here. And I would probably use the stripe in the place of the blue. Um, and then I can put some purple cardstock with it. I could take all of the patterned paper that I need for my project and I can fit it inside a large zip top bag. This is a two and a half gallon zip top bag and they are typically large enough for 12 by 12 paper, but please check the measurements. Make sure they're at least like 12 and a half um, width and height. But like I said, they typically are. So then I could put my, um, and I'll link to some that are, but I could put my pattern paper in there. Then I'm gonna need to make sure I have my embellishments in there, whether they're in bags or boxes or whatever works for me. I'm gonna cut all my card bases ahead of time and place them in there. You could of course not cut your card bases. You could put your scoring board and all that in there. I would probably just cut them ahead of time. And I'll show you how you could store your stamp set in there. But what I do recommend is that you actually just cut a bunch of half inch strips, stamp a bunch of sentiments. If say I'm using the blue sentiments for one set, instead of just stamping eight, I'm probably gonna stamp 10 to 12 in case I make a mistake and I'd rather store these sentiment strips in there than the whole stamp set. And then I would make eight, uh, sorry, 10 to 12 of whatever the other color I wanted, et cetera, um, depending on whether I was doing multiple sets. If you did wanna store the stamp set and the inks, I just put it all in a bag so that your ink cube doesn't, or your ink, your large ink pad, the top doesn't come off and get all over your patterned paper. If you have an extra stamp block, I'd probably just keep the birthday sentiment ready to go on it. Um, and you could either just store those two together in a bag or you could keep it with the whole stamp set in case you, know, you wanna figure out where it goes when you're done with it. And then you could keep uh, especially if you have a smaller adhesive in with the bag so that you're all ready to go and you don't have to get out any extra supplies. You could put a scissor in there. A lot of times scissors like this will come with a cover so that it won't pierce your bag. I probably have lost this one at this point. I've had a lot of my scissors for years and years. And so all of that can get stored in this bag. They, they do sell boxes that do something similar. I'll probably link something like that. But I did just kind of want to show you like if you're the kind of person who's kind of like new to card making, you don't have a whole you know, space already dedicated to all this stuff. Like how would you keep this project contained? And then if you did get out, if you did get the booklet and you printed out all of the pages that also could get stored right in the bag for your reference. So we did it. We made eight birthday cards. Each one is a little bit different, but all pretty simple, beginner friendly, fun to give and receive. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I do have two other classes. So if you found this helpful, if you you know got a lot out of it, enjoyed making your cards, there is 15 holiday cards in one hour. There are Valentines without scraps using six by eight paper. The holiday one does use 12 by 12, so if you have a preference for that. Um, there are workbooks for both of those. So when you go to the Etsy shop, um, you can use that coupon code on multiple. Uh, workbooks or card making templates or anything you want. I really hope you'll subscribe to the channel and um, you know have and do other projects like this with me because I'm all about no scraps, doing cards with pretty minimal supplies, really just like having fun with card making and patterned paper and it not being always about all the supplies or super complicated techniques or anything like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking anything you can take five hours on every card if you want like please whatever it is to enjoy yourself that's what i'm about and so i this is one way that card makers enjoy themselves so i will leave you with one of those other classes probably the holiday class because that's as close as this one so maybe i will see you over at the holiday class and thank you so much for joining me in today's class